Hi there, my name is Chris and I like to draw stuff um, and show you how. Uh, today we're going to be drawing a dog. Um, now it's been, oh, I've been a bit rusty over Christmas so I just need to loosen up a bit. So this is not my final picture by any means, I'm just getting my eye in, getting, getting a bit warmed up. Now I'm going to be doing hopefully lots of videos on lots of different types of animals or people or uh, jobs or knights or dinosaurs uh, whatever um, if there's anything that you want to see particular type of dog particular type of cat then pop it in the comments because uh, if you want to see how to draw something I'm happy to show you how um, okay definitely loosening up keeping this nice and simple nice and light I'm not trying to make anything fixed or perfect at all. I'm just going for imperfect scrolls, things all over the place. Just loosening up and filling the page with warm-up sketches. So if you warm up and do some stuff like this it will obviously look different and that's okay. So that's my warm-up. Good, it's been a while since I've really drawn anything properly, so um, time to get back into the groove. Okay, so we're going to keep it light, and one of the aims with these videos is to make sure that I keep things so that anybody can draw. These, are, these videos are for everybody, so if you've wanted to try drawing but never had the confidence, um, or you're... You know, you've always wanted to, or you don't know how, or you're afraid of it looking wrong, or you know, you just say to yourself, I can't draw, then this is the channel and the kind of thing I want to do for you. Because uh, everyone can draw, um, and yeah, it does take a lot of practice, and some people are naturally going to be better at it than others, but. As with anything, you can be naturally gifted, never practice, and not get anywhere with your drawing, or whatever a skill it is. Or you can be naturally not as gifted at something. Like, I could, I'm not naturally gifted at playing the piano, but I know if I practiced and I worked at it, I could get pretty good. Um, I probably wouldn't have that final flourish of being awesome or next level Mozart. I definitely wouldn't. Um, some people just have that musical ear, uh, that natural talent. But I know that I could get better than someone with natural talent who never practices. So practice, perseverance, wins against natural gifting. If it's not applied so there you go if you there's plenty of videos if you're a professional or you want to see marvel at how professional artists do things and see them create um that's yeah you know that, that's fine there's loads of videos like that and there's loads of videos i'm sure where people are showing you how to draw something in a particular way that i'm gonna try i encourage you to build things in your style which will come eventually and very very simply these are foundations okay so as i've been waffling on and uh, just a quick recap i've just been really lightly doing some basic shapes it's always basic shapes if you watch any of my videos you'll quickly find out that i say basic shapes a lot um so some ovals to form the head so you've got one for the muzzle circle for the nose one for the head um, I've gone for like a weird triangle kind of shape for the ears you don't have to do that you can make ears any kind of shape you want I'll just adjust where the neck goes and then I'll do an oval for the body now I've made this quite a generic cartoon dog he's not a particular breed or I suppose he could be more of a I don't know, Labrador type thing, uh, except for sticky upper ears. He's more just a general cartoon dog. Um, and I've done sort of ovals here, but I've made them sort of ovals that are uh, more like bread rolls. <laughs> bread rolls that sort of rise to the toes and then go down to the heel. 
And even if you just do ovals, that's totally cool. Right, you're going to squish them down a bit. And you're just going to do simple legs. And that's a leg in the background there. And there's a foot hidden behind. And then a little tail. So this is a sort of dog that um, I used to like watching a cartoon called Inspector Gadget. Um, a long, long time ago. And what was great about that was uh, this character called Brains, who was Inspector Gadget's dog. Um, Inspector Gadget was a, a bumbling kind of character who never did anything right. Uh, he just leave a trail of destruction in his wake. And it's brilliant. Um, but the dog, Brains, was the clever one um, and was always trying to tidy up and uh, getting into slapstick comedy behind the scenes. And Inspector Gadget never knew that Brains was actually really the Brains. Um, it was fab. So he had a sidekick called Penny, who was a little girl who had a computer book. A book that opened up and became like a little computer screen with glowing lights, and that was so cool. Um, and of course, in those days, the best we had weren't even beige computers. So that's how long ago I was a kid. So, okay, I'm kind of looking... Well, this could be tidied up a bit, so that's all right. So, oval, oval, nose circle. We'll position that just a little bit so it's overlapping. And then these ears, yeah, they'll do. But it's basically rectangle and then a little pokey bit there. So my friends at university, when I was studying animation, said, oh, your dogs look like Gromit. They all look like Gromit. And it's, and it's true. Uh, they do. That's because Brains, from respect to Gadget, looked incredibly like Gromit. And they're both very good character designs, so I'm good with that. Okay, so I'm now swapping to a pen. I've roughed out the outlines enough, um, and I'm just going to fill in some of the gaps. Um, you might want to draw a more fixed line so that you're absolutely sure where you want to draw, like that, be a bit more clear. But at the same time, that does tend to take some of the life out of the picture. So still, I use, a, um, with inking, I use a brush pen. Uh, you can use a felt tip or whatever. I just find brush pens just give a really nice line and really make things pop with a, a thick, thin contrast. So I'd recommend getting one of these if you possibly can, or something very similar. This was like, two pounds off Amazon several years ago uh, with virtually no postage. It was very small, so um, that was from Japan. Um, so let's start inking. I always tend to do the eyes first. Once you've got the eyes in place, then you can, that becomes like the anchor for the point for the head for me. So once you know where the eyes are, you know, not too far apart, not too close, nice ovals and leave a bit of a highlight here. Like that um, shows reflection in the eyes, and gives the character a bit of life. And then, uh, what am I gonna do now? This is where I have to stop and think. I normally do just a little few bit of tuft of hair because I just like that look, a few tufts. And then I'm not gonna follow that oval shape exactly. I'm just gonna do this because that makes the head move into the nose. Um, but the second part is I'm going to do the nose. Um, a big blobby nose. I'm just going to do that because that's going to be the highlight. You can shade that in later. And then from here into here. It's a line I usually follow so I can connect the nose to the rest of his face. And then round about here, I'm just going to draw his model and that connects round the rest of his head. So if you do um, inking without doing really firm pencil lines it does look a bit more lively um, otherwise you end up looking like something that's more like a tracing and some of the, the expressiveness of the pencil or the picture itself just gets lost a bit. And also I'm not following these lines exactly. I mean, notice how I've just made a bit of a mistake. That's cool. Uh, try and tie that up a bit. Okay, not perfect. It'll do. Okay, 
Okay. I think what I was doing there was I was trying to be a bit too firm with my lines, a bit too, I want to get it in the right place. Um, exactly. And um, that means very often you're sort of more tense, a bit more locked down in what you want. And that means that your picture sometimes doesn't come out as you want it to. Whereas if you are looser like that, you get a few more mistakes and some happy accidents. And sometimes things look a bit fresher and you can always go back and use some Tipex and modify things. So, um, I'm just going to do a body like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then, okay, that's interesting. I don't like the way that's going at the base there, at the back. I'll just adjust it a little bit. Again, if you're going to show this to anybody, um, you can always do some Tipex over it. You can use, um, or if you take it into a computer, um, what you don't see is many, what you don't see so much is the pitch is on the way to the finished one. Um, so, you know, everyone makes that sort of mistake and they'd take it into a computer and erase those bits or they'd be drawing it in a computer anyway. It'd be easy to erase. I'm going to keep the legs really simple, as simple as possible. I'm going to keep the feet pretty simple as well. So like those bread rolls, but a bit bulbous one end. Don't worry if it doesn't turn out the way you want. And a couple of lines there for toes. And then I'm just going to do a simple line there. Because we're keeping it simple. Now there's plenty of different ways of drawing. Oh, so many different ways of drawing everything. This is different ways of drawing eyes, of doing legs. Um, there'll be lots of artists who go, hey, draw something different. Do the eyes, do, um, don't just do the pupils, do like white bits around here. We really fill those in because they need to be expressive. And it's like, yes, but we're just keeping it simple at the moment. And I like that look, so. So there. <laughs> But I've also reached the point where I know how to make those eyes look in different directions, even though there's not a lot. Uh, there's no whites of the eyes to help help with that. So, yeah, I know the rules enough to break them when it comes to art. I'm not very happy with that foot. That's a bit lame. And I don't mean <laughs> a bit lame. Ah, dear. Lame in that teenage American sense, I suppose. Not in not anything foot related. Um, now I'm just going to colour things in. That was an unintentional pun. Uh, not one I meant to say. Okay, now I'm just going to colour this in a bit. I'm just going to colour in quite roughly. And just the I like adding generally all my basic drawings of dogs. I do like obviously the black nose, black eyes, black tail, black tail. That sounds like a pirate dog. Black tail, the pirate dog. Uh, quite like that. I'm just colouring in these ears as well because in your black and white pictures, um, you've got to have enough areas of dark, um, and that makes the white areas. Yeah, it makes a more impactful picture. Draws the eye. And then if there's two areas of black, don't join them up in the colouring. Just leave a bit of a gap between them. And then that sort of becomes a sort of a negative outline. You can tell that that ear is still in front of that ear. Okay, um, I think that's just about done. We could add a collar. 
Oh, there we go. A bit more back. I'm going to need a new pen soon. Yeah. Um, and then, last of all, your squibble. So there we go. That's how to draw a dog. Um, a very basic cartoon dog. Um, I like keeping things simple when I can. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then let me know. If you want me to draw anything in particular next, let me know in the comments. Um, I've got plenty of ideas. There's no end of things you can draw. So what I would say is um, don't be afraid to practice, practice, practice. Just go for it. Um, and at this point, so you can practice, I'd suggest turning off YouTube and turning off that endless stream because I do that too um, but not before if you really liked this video liking it and clicking subscribe um, and that would be a great help but then other than that I'll see you at the next one have a good day bye